Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a happy couple in love. For those reacting to some Halo. We do. We're like, happy for Halo. Yeah, we like playing. We're happy for Halo. I like that. And we also like playing Halo. So we played Halo 1 and 2, which you can check out those uh, playthroughs down below in the description of this video. We do that live. We live stream uh, Friday nights, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And so uh, while we take a little bit of a break before we play Halo 3, uh, we're going to check out the Halo Terminals. We were told to check those out. For some more lore before we play Halo 3. So this is Halo 1 terminal, so we're gonna react to. Penguins, I've missed the grunts. Mm-hmm. You have missed the grunts. I have. Hate the Oracle. I must insist that you immediately change course and return to a minimum safe distance of one light year. This has served as your one and final warning. I have activated defensive systems and you now have 30 seconds to return to the minimum safe distance of... Wait. Curious. What? Indeed. After all these years. Greetings, humans. Now welcome to installation 04. Ignore prior warnings and please continue. Huh. Okay, well now I'm just super suspicious. I have to yeah. 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 I must verify the presence and pitch of your gay arch before allowing full access. We have much to discuss, humans. I've been away far too long. You have been away far too long. You suck! I'm super suspicious of someone's like, I'm about to kill you. Yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. Proceed. Oh, oh wait, it's you? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I've been waiting for you. You, I really want to come here. Experiencing such a mixture of anticipation and dread. <laughs> All preparations are complete for my installation. In accordance with the final dictum of the Dickening Council, I have released myself of all remaining connections to my former station. This was not difficult. What was could never be again. We had seen to that quite thoroughly. Prior to my final journey through the Great Portal, a gathering of my fellow monitors was convened upon the Lightworkers' branch to distribute the final Phoenix collection. Hmm. Does he have friends and buddies? No way. It was most unusual to have this vessel of rebirth play host to such an event. Even though Lightworkers' ships were the only ones still allowed slip space permissions, Lightworkers were responsible for getting us to our places on the active facilities of the array. While all of this was in accordance with the plan, one entirely unsatisfactory breakdown remained. We had no contact with the domain. The history of all forerunners was now lost to us. We relied upon the permanence of the domain to preserve our record of the events that led to this point. But without that record, what future civilizations know anything about us? Or only of our weapons? My fellow monitor, 049 Abject Testament, had only one comment on this before we went our separate ways. We deserve to be forgotten. Yeah, Perhaps. especially you. Perhaps. <laughs> but now, the portal opens. And through it, the familiar shape awaits. Halo. Home. <sighs> Come from, who is your maker? 
sadness and disrepair. So the contract's not part of it. It has now been 3,000 years since my last contact with any of the other caretakers on the Halo Array. Despite clear communications protocol, my fellow monitors have either chosen to ignore or, more likely, have lost the ability like to the engage in our scheduled updates. <laughs> the continued lapse of the domain means that we are stuck with achingly slow wormhole supernovable communications. Prior to this total communication shutdown, the only messages I received in the preceding 4,573 years were incomplete and quite perplexing transmissions from Installation 05. What goes through my mind when the Oracle talks is Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z a bridge going NERD! Perhaps the other monitors are dealing with interfering galactic phenomena or unexpected system failures. 3,000 years of system failures. Indeed. In the meantime, I have exhausted all scheduled research activities assigned by the Council. Once those experiments were complete, I shut down all sentinel function and put myself into a state of significant animation to hmm. measure performance of the installation with negligible upkeep. After 150 years with no noticeable impact upon installation systems or integrity, even a hibernation I became bored. This was quite rough, as I was led to believe I was not capable of such a state. This was one of the gifts I was promised, an end to strike. I am aware of the dangers of a system such as myself losing operational focus. Quite troubling. I wonder if my fellow monitors are experiencing similar states. 
Oh, look, this is because of my particular path to this installation. For amusement, I've begun a series of experiments involving the evacuation of all matter from contained sections of my installation. Hmm. By measuring the geologic effects of exposure to the vacuum of space and the eventual biological recovery of these sections, I anticipate giving valuable insight into emergency response scenarios in case of sentient proximity or so he's testing out the self-destruct in case the flood so. get it out of hand. It has been 26 hours since the sentience landed in sector 1215. And so far, they have not attempted to exit the remains of their vessel. I say remains because their landing was either not executed adequately Hmm. Oh, this vessel lacks significant maneuvering capability. The visible portions of the vessel have suffered catastrophic structural damage during the violent landing experience. I have detected atmospheric leaks in 17 distinct locations along the hull. My analysis shows that the mixture of gases coming from the ship matches the natural atmosphere of my installation almost exactly. Perhaps the occupants, if they still live, were originally cataloged here. Perhaps these beings will confirm that the plan was successful, and that the galaxy has returned to its proper cadence. I am beyond optimistic. <laughs> but I do not understand why these sentients have not attempted to exit their vessel. Other than the leaking atmosphere, the only thing emanating from this wreckage is an automated distress call. Maybe they're all dead. Mm -hmm. I am currently translating this automated broadcast, but with such a limited data set, and no direct communication, I do not anticipate full comprehension. Given the short-range nature of this craft, it is likely that other vessels are nearby. But, in accordance with procedure, I am blocking the distress call. No communication of the location of any installation is permissible. Hmm. I admit great curiosity about these visitors. While the plan is quite clear about procedure for this situation, I have my doubts. How many failure points can the plan sustain before blind adherence becomes counterproductive? Surely in light of all that has changed, I should be able to modify my responses to adapt it. No, I have duties. And I have a terrible cargo here. I must be sure. I shall obey and content myself to monitor. I hope they come out soon though. So many questions to ask. So many questions. Nerd! <laughs> he sounds like me though. I have so many questions <laughs> after I didn't even watch that I really like. I'm gonna have so many questions after this one. That's for sure. The construction of the self confidence of all the unexplained vessel was completed today. No occupants ever exited. No they were dead. Other than the automated broadcast that repeated every 72.83 seconds until the signal turned. It's like being lost. Yeah. But were there ever any occupants on it? It's just crash landed. Mm. Visible or remote contact with any survivors of this vessel's inanimate landing. Atmosphere from inside the craft stopped 22 weeks before the signal ceased. No relationship between these two events can be established with certainty. Gases that did escape were sterilized. No further sign of alien visitors or rescuers has been identified on any sensor systems. I have now endured 60,000 years without word from outside the array. Wow. I have no way to know whether we actually saved the galaxy we destroyed. And because of protocol, I sat silently while my first chance to be judged for those acts died. To say that I regret being forced to this outcome is a tremendous understatement. <laughs> Say 60,000 years. But as I said before, my inspection of the quarantine perhaps today, I am reminded of the gravity of my responsibilities. Just one of these spores, if released from this facility, would render the ultimate judgment against our self-appointed role as protectors of this galaxy. 
when the plan to maintain the halo array was created, it was a point of some contention whether we should preserve any remnant of the flood infection. Many thought this unwise, as there was a notable chance that one day one of our containment facilities might be breached. Those who held this belief were almost successful at convincing the Ecumen Council to destroy the last blood cells. You should have. But oddly enough, it was the librarian who decided otherwise. And I believe she was correct. I know in a way I cannot logically explain that there exists a way to actually defeat the blood. To immunize, to cure. I still struggle with multiple layers of memory of fighting the blood. But I know this cure is possible, even though the poor genius of the forerunners was unable to achieve it. The forerunners ancient enemy held and used that knowledge once, but it was denied to us. And without samples for further study, that cure will never again be found. Of course, I have no reason to believe that here lies the entirety of the parasite. It may be waiting in the frozen void beyond this galaxy, or worse, inexorably drifting toward us. I don't know what survives out beyond my installation. But I know that in order for anything to survive, I have to protect this installation and its quarantine very carefully. Yes, the library was right to store it. No, Examine no. it. Continue to see the cure. No. No. Still, next visitor, things will be different. Very interesting the sort of like ancient ruin mm -hmm. that they keep showing. Nobody wants to talk to you. This is not what I had in mind when I volunteered. Not what I had in mind at all. I am always naive to think I understood what this installation meant. We were all so naive. Looking back, we should have done a few things differently. Hindsight's always helpful. For one thing, we should have installed two caretakers for installation. Mm. You might be lonely. Because I am alone, I'm losing focus. Yeah. And that is very, very dangerous for a system such as myself. Perhaps a visit to the nearby gas giant is in order. Well, oh, most drives could certainly make the journey. A few hundred years of travel might do me some good. There it was again. How very unproductive of me. It seems strange that the library did not account for this. Their strength was always in planning and positioning the pieces and then being bold enough to let it happen, to let her plans come true. I was a part of many of those plans long before I knew for certain that she was real, before any of us were. But at the end, we had only a fragment of her brilliance left to us. And I fear that you do not fully appreciate the nature of my situation here. The problems in my post. But even a fragment of a fragment of yes. Oh dear, here it comes again. Star system. And that only 
soon as the firing of a mere seven halos, and the original twelve rings who find to see yours. Sterilization would spread far farther than most foreigners ever fear in the reach. Sterilization. Even with just seven rings, we were able to destroy every side of the planet. And every other sentient creature along with it. Jesus. This victory was the will of our people, despite the fact that it meant our own end as well. But by our pure measurement, it was a victory and cleared the stage for the rest of the librarian's plan. I sometimes wonder whether the didact could have succeeded at a much smaller cost. I know the folly of opposing him personally. And his brains was unsurpassed. Except, perhaps, by your own. He never got the chance to fully execute his proposal. The council saw to that. But if something were to go wrong with one of the halos, if our tools were ever turned against us. Long plans, indeed. It's getting darker. Mm -hmm. They kind of look like Viking ruins, don't they? Yeah, a little bit. What the hell is that? It's a person. I no? forgot something. What did I? My name. I forgot. Oh, uh, Jeez, Jacob, Captain, service number 01928-19912-JK. What is that noise? What is that damn noise? Yeah. Oh my god. I know, it gives me the... Heebie-jeebies. Yep. 
So uh, I'm glad we checked this out, uh, yes. get some more lore uh, going on in into it. Um, I'm not sure I totally understood everything, but uh, basically, so this, uh, the Oracle, is it like, is it a um, sentient being, like, mind, like, put into AI, basically? Because they talk about, like, they're, like, like, they're people or whatever, and... I don't really remember the librarian. Did we learn about the librarian in the Halo 1 and 2? I, I don't think we actually have. Okay, so I, I don't really remember the, the, the librarian or whatever, um, but like from, from what I gather, I don't know if this is what you gather, but like, uh, so their like race or whatever like that this Oracle uh, was from basically created Halo to uh, preserve whatever little life they, they could, but like then wiped out a ton of uh, worlds of all living uh, being so that they could kill one kill the flood and then two uh, Kill anything that the flood could have possibly infected as well But then why keep samples of the flood alive like they said they said like so like there could be a hope for a cure To eventually, you know save the flood But it didn't seem like anyone was like doing like research in the hundred thousand years that like this thing was uh, In Halo nobody was doing research to, to help preserve or to cure the flood. So what was the pur purpose of having them? It just seemed like you know it, that was uh that was a really bad strategy, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it seemed to come at this from such a a logical and scientific perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes, we don't want this to be in control or have power or to kill people, but it would be perhaps scientifically irresponsible to wipe it out completely. Therefore, we will preserve samples for, like, further study in the greater good somehow. Um, which does then require further study. Mm -hmm. This was so rich with history and context yeah. around the Halo world that I'm glad I saw it. I feel like I probably could watch it two or three more times. <laughs> yeah. And, and then maybe just then start to get a firm grasp on it. I think my favorite one was the perspective of the guy who had been infected with the oh, blood. Oh, yes. That was so incredibly unsettling to see things from his perspective and his memory of being a whole person and mm -hmm. then the, the realization of, of that transformation that he's undergone and the hearing of the hive mind or, the, or like the flood mind. Grave mind, I think is what it's called. There yeah. it is. Um, in his head, kind of like conversing with him and overpowering him and even taking away the memories of loved ones. Um, yeah, absorbing the, the memories. Like, like, like there are memories now, like, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think all of this was, was so important to learn. And, and again, I feel like I could watch it a few more times and, and still probably not even catch all of it. Most of it seems like a history lesson, which was very valuable. But that one about the guy going through the transformation was the first time that I think it really hit on a, 
on a pathos level. Yeah, Everything else was yeah. ethos. It was all cerebral. It was all like, here are the facts and here's what's going on and the logic behind it all and mm -hmm. the oracle's not so terrible if you understand their point of view and yeah. whatever. Um, but like that one was the one that I was like, ah, you you now have just started to strike at me and my humanity and my heartstrings and that is what I'm walking away with. Going back to one of the first terminals we saw where he asked the question, like he was just like, uh, maybe we should be forgotten. It's like, like, is when he like, he asked like one of his buddies or whatever, one of his friends that was going out to the other terminals, like maybe everything we know, all our knowledge should be forgotten, should be gone because maybe a little bit of, of regret of, of what happened and uh, wiping out, you know, everybody, like, cause they wiped out their own planet as well. I mean like in wiping out all the other planets, they, wiped out, they killed themselves as well. Like, like, I guess they put like all of their knowledge into these, uh, you know, robots, this, these AI, this, this AI. I thought that was cool going, Thinking about it now, after having seen everything, all the other terminals, thinking about that one terminal, uh, I really liked that line. And I wonder, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you wouldn't want anyone else to do what we did. Like, we did it wrong, so maybe we should be forgotten because maybe somebody else will do it right. Which I have to imagine that's how people felt when they discovered, like, the nuclear bomb. Here was this thing, and, and nuclear power serves a purpose and and can improve lives because of the power it generates. Yeah. But also the nuclear bomb is the most terrifying thing imaginable, and maybe it should be forgotten. Um, you know, they're they're coming at it from the perspective of this this sentient artificial intelligence, yeah. but it's very much in line with the human race. And, and our way of thinking and, and the discoveries we've made in the name of science and in the name of bettering our lives, which are wonderful. But on the other side of the coin, <laughs> the discoveries you've made that are horrific and terrible and, and, and the thing of nightmares. Um, it's comfortable for us to watch something like this and see it removed from us in this fashion. But it is in fact an echo of, of what we as people are capable of. You have to let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And uh, if you wanna like, you know, maybe explain anything that we might have uh, missed or just not kind of fully grasped, uh, let us know. I mean, we're gonna check out Halo 2 terminals before yes. we play Halo 3 as well. Uh, looking forward to those. Yep. And uh, seeing like what else, like what kind of topic they, they cover. So this one covered a little bit more of the, of the flood. Yeah. Um, so I'll be the floof. The floof, as we, as we like to call it. Uh, if you checked out our live streams, you'll know why we call it the floof. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's us. It's the floof. <laughs> the other thing that I thought was really interesting was the concept of loneliness. Mm, um, yes. Which I, I just kind of want to highlight there because it's, it's something that people, even those who are independent and self-sufficient and, and very comfortable with themselves and enjoy their own company, humans are social creatures. And so it was very interesting too, to have that other parallel of like the Oracle talking about like, am I feeling this way because I'm alone? Um, and loneliness is a, is a form of torture to humans. You know, that's, yeah. why, that's why they put people solitary in solitary confinement. confinement. Yeah. Um, so that I just felt was very interesting too, to have that, that aspect thrown in. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I think our community is so incredible because you all have made such a wonderful, positive, welcoming online community that we are proud of every single moment of mm -hmm. every single day. You know, after having lived through pandemics and, and everything else in the world, it's so important to have that connection to other people who are kind and generous spirited and who are willing to reach out to someone else. And you know, the world could use a lot more of that. So I'm just shouting you all out because you are incredible. I love my wife. <laughs> You are incredible and you're amazing. Um, yeah. So thanks so much for checking out our reaction to Halo 1, or thanks so much for checking out our reaction to uh, Halo Combat Evolved, all terminals, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.